Too many leaders lead for validation, not impact, for what they can get out of it more than what they can give to it. Hi, my name is Chris, and I'm obsessed with how leaders grow and develop, and I too have insecure moments. We all do. Glad you're here with me now on the Sight Shift Podcast so you can learn how to lead for impact, not validation. All right, welcome everybody to the Sight Shift Podcast. I have introduced you the last few episodes, we're doing something fun, to partner, coach, teammate, operations leader, Mark Stanifer in the house. Mark, glad to have you here. Good day. Yeah, man, we're going to have some fun. So it's summertime vibes. It's not even officially summertime, by the way. June 22nd is summertime, but I always forget that. Can't convince me based on the weather and the vibe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I start getting into that mode. We joke about it around here. Like, oh no, it's good weather. Is Chris going to work? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I definitely operate in terms of like a season or an intensity, but also the weather can affect things for sure. Yeah. And uh, so we're going to have some fun with you today and share with you what happens if you're too serious all the time. You know, what's that saying? All work, no play, no play. makes Jack a dull boy. Yeah. Yeah. Dull people don't lead very well. <laughs> And not that you have to be exaggerated in your personality, it's not about that at all, but it's about being able to have fun in the midst of the intensity. I feel like the content is a little bit speaking right at me today, <laughs> so we'll see, we'll see what happens. It's, uh, it, me too, me too, in the sense that it's easier for me to get to the intensity of what we want to get done. And what's been fun to learn over the years is what it's like to really make the journey fun, even though it isn't all resolved. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to help you with. We're going to walk through six benefits you're not going to get if you can't adopt the mindset we're going to dive into. And to set this up, I want to tell you a story from a TV show called Succession on HBO. Not safe for work, if you need that disclaimer. And one of the most powerful scenes to me is the dad goes in. And it's in some kind of club where they were having a birthday party for the kids. And he's trying to get this last legacy deal of his lifetime across the finish line. And he goes in to meet with them, and he's spent years manipulating them, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Terrible in character, but the way they paint his uh, profile is like killer business savvy. And so as he's trying to apologize to his kids, and it seems like it's a heartfelt apology, they're now trying to get their pound of flesh from him. And they just won't let him off the hook. And so finally then, he delivers the kill shot back to them. Rather than being able to amend this moment, he looks at them and just says this directly to them. I love you, but you're not serious people. Mm. And he cuts them off at the knee. These are childish kids who haven't learned what it took for dad to build all this momentum. Now they're squandering that momentum. They're trying to get this little bit of money more than what they already had and they can't see what's really going on and we want to help you be the kind of leader who leads with purpose and vision and passion and knows how to build a team and knows how to run the team knows how to reconstitute the team if they need to gets to the horizon of vision and that's some serious intense work right right it's not easy right but and if, it's, it's required too Right. We're, we're, we're going to get into the fun and the play as, as we go. But what's striking me listening to you tell that story is that the, the opposite of all work and no play isn't the answer either. Mm. There's a requirement to be serious, responsible, to, to hold the, the authority, the position, the responsibility that you have with some, with some commitment and resolve mm -hmm. and respect for it. But the pendulum can't swing either direction to the extreme. Otherwise, it's detrimental. Yeah, right on. I love that. So what we're going to walk through is these six reasons that you want to adopt this mindset. And we're going to define it for you just clearly. What does it mean to be the kind of leader who understands play has to be a part of what we do and how we do it? And we're going to word these negatively because we want to wake you up. Here's the six pieces you're going to miss out on if you don't have these rhythms or rituals as a mindset. So number one, if it's all work and no play for you, you get burned, you get burned. So when you're accomplishing something or you're trying to accomplish a big vision, the steam is building, mm -hmm. like those pressure cookers of old. The steam builds, and if that steam doesn't ever release, it explodes. Um, when I was a kid, my mom was cooking with one of these pressure cookers, 
and Mark, I wasn't mature enough to understand the moment and how to communicate it. So <laughs> she has it blow up. She gets burned. It's not like permanent damage, but she's definitely but serious. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She's shaken up. So I call my dad and, you know, calling my dad, which is fine. It was his setup. I've got to call receptionist assistant and get put through to him. And then I'm like, this is how I open up the convo. Dad, mom isn't permanently injured. And he's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, and I had to just then go, oh, wait a second. You know, I didn't need to open up like that. She's fine. She was fine. But it's this idea that if you don't release the steam, we got problems. Yeah. I, I, I remember having this awareness moment with um, emotional intelligence, EQ, emotions. Because for the longest time, I, I thought... I thought EQ, emotional intelligence, was just not blowing off, not releasing the steam, keeping it all in check, right? Yeah. You, can, you can see the problems in that. And I remember having this awareness moment about emotions in general, not just specifically here, the pressure, but where does it build up? It builds yeah. up with the pressure and the anger, the frustration. Um, I thought that keeping that all in check was emotional intelligence. And I remember the moment where I'm like, oh, that's, <laughs> that's not it. That's not healthy because at some point mm. it blows. Mm. And chances are, and I've got experience to prove it, it blows mm. into those relationships that are most important to you, like at, like at home. Mm. Um, <clears throat> and so you have, to, you have to release the steam. Otherwise, fill in the blank. It's going to find its way out and it's going to create some damage in the process. Thank you. Thank you. So this is a mindset and we're just trying to wake you up to the damage that happens if you don't have this mindset of we celebrate. We celebrate after we're done. We're celebrating as we go and we celebrate who people are. And I'll, you know, make that really clear at the end. But I think it's worth just wording um, a caution around somebody hears this and they're like, oh yeah, man, we've been accomplishing some big stuff as an organization right now. And, and we need to have a, a pizza party, mm, mm. you know, so, so that's the answer. And this is why I think for me, uh, corporate America sucks so bad at doing what we're going to lay out in this episode, because a pizza party is not going to be, I mean, you can do that and that's fine, but that's not going to be that release of steam. Yeah. It has to be something that's a part of the culture that's just more than that. Because what ends up happening is, I think we approach it like recess as a kid. And you remember being on the, you imagine Loved recess. Yeah, recess was awesome. What if somebody showed up in recess and was like, "Hey guys, we we got thirty minutes. Let's plan this out so we can make the most of it." <laughs> you got the monkey bars for two minutes. You got right. the swing set. You right. got the seesaw. It would it it would be terrible. And so that might be some things that you do in your rhythm. But we want to expand your mindset to more than that. Because if you don't, the second negative you're going to have happen is you're not going to access creativity and innovation. You're not going to get to your best insights, the members of your team, you yourself, and everybody in between. Yeah. So, so my history experience is dominated by corporate America. And, and I remember breaking in a new team or incorporating some new members on, onto my team. And we were also going through a, a, a move from like one set of um, cubes to, to another mm. set. And those can be super disruptive and th th there's a whole story we could tell on that. But in the process of my team moving into their new space, we, we found this black woman's heeled shoe left behind. <laughs> and there was no story to this. There was no context other than like this shoe got left behind. And in that moment, just spontaneously, creatively, we, we decided, oh, this is just going to be an award that yeah. we share with each other for for a milestone, for a performance, something that we appreciated. Mm -hmm. One of the guys actually took it home, spray painted it with a gold, like uh, sparkly spray paint, mounted it on a finished <laughs> and and lacquered up plaque, and it became the Golden Shoe Award. And it was for us, it was a, it was a moment mm. to just like celebrate some individual creativity mm -hmm. and to then share with others on a regular basis uh, an accomplishment some creativity mm -hmm. that some innovation that mm. they brought to the team for the for the work that they had done i love that dude it actually made me think of something i hadn't remembered in a long time an organization i was involved in there were a lot of pressure points celebrating innovation i would get up and be leading the team meeting with the staff and i had a flying monkey that you shot like a rubber band and it would scream while it's coming at you <laughs> 
<laughs> so just as a fun way, it would like get up there and you didn't know who the monkey was going to get shot at. Yeah. Um, last December, a year and a half ago, I was um, at a place where I was really stuck on a significant goal we were trying to accomplish. And man, I'd been toiling over it, like deep sighs driving my daughter to school. And she's like, what is going on? And I'd never have my phone on where the ring comes through, but I did because we were trying to get this thing closed. And, and so even my daughter was like, you never have your phone on. You know, it's always on silence. So I went down to my office uh, at the house we were at at that time, got the no, and, and I'd just been rolling around with this thing, trying to wrestle, trying to figure it out. And I walked upstairs, and they were watching Impractical Jokers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just was like, I'm going to set everything down and watch this show like I have no trouble in the world and laughed my butt off and had a blast. And then an idea hit me while we were watching the show. Ended up, I emailed the guy. We got the yes got everything squared away that weekend, and by Monday we were off and running. And it was just the discipline. And it t it's not easy to set it all down and find that creative breakthrough. Mm -hmm. the, third, the third missing piece you're going to have, if you don't have party and celebration as a mindset, you're never going to enter into peak flow states. You're never going to enter into peak flow states. I want to read to you here from a book called The Rise of Superman. Because he talks about this idea that we keep breaking new athletic frontiers as we hit more and more flow states. And he's talking about this idea of play, that flow doesn't always feel flowy. It's not like, ooh, I'm in the flow. It's, it's when we're doing hard things and we're fully activated and we're in this, um, we're in this environment where there's deep, immersive feedback and mm. rich and we're, we're failing and growing. So anyway, he says this. Uh, what's painfully ironic here is that flow is a radical and alternative path to mastery only because we have decided that play, which is an activity fundamental to survival, tied to the greatest neurochemical rewards the brain can produce, and flat out necessary for achieving peak performance, creative brilliance, and overall life satisfaction, he says we've only decided now that play is a waste of time for adults. Mm. If we are hunting the highest version of ourselves, then we need to turn work into play and not the other way around. And, and you know, this, this may be a little bit cheesy for people, but... I joked with Mark this morning. I was like, you're like my work wife. You have to listen to everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the idea being, I would be miserable if I wasn't with someone who, as we attempt and take hills, whether it's you and I, it's our leadership team, it's our coaches, it's the impact crew we're launching, I would be miserable if we couldn't be people who are serious, on purpose, going for the highest level impact and rewards, and we can laugh while we do it. I mean, I love it. And I love that, like, this is what you want to think about as you're building the community around you. How can you be aligned with people who can get the freaky edges of your humor that maybe nobody else would get? And there's jokes like that that I can crack with you, Mark. So I appreciate that, man. We got to have it. Or there's no flow. It's no accident that the, the values, the pillars for our organization are impact income and fun. Mm. It's no mistake that fun is in there, correct? Yeah, yeah. Right? Like it's it's a it's a key ingredient and we're missing something if we don't have that element of fun. Not childish mm -hmm. necessarily, but fun in a childlike way and boy that's just way more enjoyable. Dude, I'm so glad you said that and remind us of that cuz that's the that's the joy we want you to experience with your business. And like for me, People ask a lot, like, how do we know we're in that place that we're healthy as a culture and we're having fun? And there's a lot of precision and accuracy we can give to this data, risk factors, all that. But I'll tell you this, when you can joke with each other about your insecurities, mm. like that is so much fun. And it's so much fun to be in that space where recently in a team meeting, one of our team leaders, he said, uh, well, Chris, you just don't like that idea because it's not your idea. <laughs> <laughs> and he was serious about it. And it was a serious comment, but he was also delivering it in a funny way. Right. You know, and we could all laugh at it. And that's, that's a good time, man. Yeah, and if we do that, that's going to help us alleviate this fourth mistake, which is this. If you don't have this mindset, you're going to let the self self doubt rob you of joy. You're going to let the self doubt rob you of joy. Um, Here's the thing. You are trying to do things that are difficult and hard. If you're leading, if you're in the arena, to use the Roosevelt quote, you are doing things that are going to cause you to feel doubt. Mm -hmm. Feeling doubt is normal. 
you know, I wake up and I feel doubts. That's a part of this game. The play helps me not let the joy get robbed in the doubts. You know, so even this morning, I, I was processing some things and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm trying to avoid making a mistake. I'm so afraid of making a mistake in this one thing. I gotta let that go. I'm gonna make mistakes. And then I found some joy. Would it surprise you to know that I've been characterized as intimidating? <laughs> I didn't know this was coming. No, it wouldn't. And it's not that you're trying to be intimidating. It's that you're, and this is how we all are wired up, it's that your own insecurities are trying to get answered or comforted. You know, oh, how come I didn't know about this? I'm not going to be able to deliver what I need to deliver here. I'm not going to get the right information and have the right answer, right? Am I? Yeah, I mean, it's certainly not the Dwayne Johnson type of intimidating, right? <laughs> it's, not, it's not that imposing, physical imposing type of intimidation. It's more of just a constant seriousness and intensity about me. Um, and I think it's because I go too often and too long at the serious and not allow space for the fun, wow. for the joy, for the celebrating. Yeah. And so I can come across to people as too, uh, as too serious. In intimidating is the word, mm. the word that they've used. And I think they're just, they're just experiencing me a seriousness with which I come at life, or a vision, or a project, or a relationship. But the reminder for me is like, chill out, Mark. Don't, mm. don't take yourself so seriously because you don't want people to experience you as intimidating. Mm. You want the full experience, including celebrating and joy and, and fun. Dude, uh, thank you just for the vulnerability. And yeah, it is, uh, it's awesome to step into these spaces because if you can, this sets up the fifth mistake. You don't miss out. If you don't have this celebration mindset, we're not, if we're not celebrating outcomes, process, and people, if we're not doing that as we go, we're going to miss the bonding. Mm. We're going to miss the bonding. We don't get to have the full richness of human experience that makes it all worth it. I mean, you can ask people, how's life? If their relationships are good, very oftentimes they feel like life is good. If their relationships are bad, they feel like life is bad. And I know circumstances can weigh down on us and, and cause us trouble, but we very often rate the quality of our lives based on the depth of the bonding that we're experiencing. Um, I, I saw this in a real way recently. There was a film called Foe, which is a great like science fiction film around AI, and I don't want to give too much away. And, but so the whole point of it is you can see this marriage slowly decaying, growing apart more and more and more and more and more. And, and how did they show the end of the marriage? They're in an apocalyptic scenario. It doesn't rain. Finally, it rains. The wife runs out and is dancing in the rain. She pleads with the husband to come out. He won't come out. She finally drags him out. And while she's dragging him out of the house to come dance with her in the rain, he trips and falls. And it's, it's just a beautiful way to, to show this moment of like, okay, in the humiliation, in the ego, in this insecurity, what's he going to do? Is he going to laugh at the fall? No. Mm. He starts blaming. He mm. accuses. Mm. He looks right at her. I think he says, you look stupid or something. Goes back inside. And, dude, you just feel like the weight of it. It's like the marriage is over. The mission is over. The team is over. I mean, and, and so what we're saying to you is this is such a powerful thing that if you can be the kind of leader you don't have to orchestrate these moments, but they are going to show up where someone invites you into some silliness and play, and you can let whatever hair down you have and get into that moment. And, and oftentimes what will happen is that moment will come out of your own failure. It's like, yeah, I biffed that one. So can I have a little fun? Please in, do. In the moment. Yeah. Um, the... The overlap of our movie interests, Chris's and mine, is very narrow. <laughs> my guess is my interest is maybe more of a popular type of type of interest. Yes. So perhaps I can offer a, Please do. a film that <laughs> most of our listeners or watchers would have seen, like the most recent Top Gun movie, Ma mm. Maverick. So my mind goes to this scene from that movie where they're playing football on the beach. Have you seen this one? 
I did, and but they did it in the first one too. They they played. I think they played volleyball on oh, the beach. Oh, that's right. Yeah. In this one, they're playing football, yeah. and it's a different. Um, it, yeah. It's a different expression of the game where they're playing both offense and defense at the time. Anyway, um, Tom Cruise's character mm -hmm. is sitting in the chair watching all of this play out, and the the military official who is overseeing the project that he's supposed to be doing. I don't remember the rank or the, the name. He walks up and he's like, oh, okay, what, what are we doing? <laughs> and Tom Cruise's character says, we're, we're playing football. Here, here's the quote. So that conversation progresses. The, the, uh, the officer says, every minute counts. Why are we out here playing games? Ooh. <laughs> and Cruise's character's response is, you said create a team. And he points at the group on the beach having fun playing. And he said, there's your team. And it's just a powerful cinematic uh, representation, illustration of the point that you're making here. The bonding moment that happens when you're able to play together and the team can crystallize and, and form around that experience. Dude, that's great. That great illustration and something people can relate to. <laughs> <laughs> It's it, this will be fun as we do more of these episodes. The movie overlap and the music overlap. It's a it's a narrow, it's narrow. slice. It's narrow, and uh, and we, we celebrate when it's there. But <laughs> we need Mark here to make this uh, very much consumable uh, by more people. So that's I love it. That's exactly it, and and it's a great example of what sets up this sixth piece because if you don't have this celebration mindset, you're not going to maximize the mind's capacity, and so. When you think about what is the path to long-term recall, we know this from, from the brain standpoint, adrenaline is the path to long-term recall. I get no adrenaline when my kids tell me about some of their friends. And that's why I don't remember their names. <laughs> and that's why I don't remember, you know, my daughter wasn't feeling well recently. And I wondered if it was because we had all the house plants that are in her room. She's a big plant person, tons of plants. I was like, I wonder, I Googled that. And you can have mold in the soil. And that can be a thing. And um, I was like, hey, what about the houseplants and possibly mold in the soil? And she got upset at me, rightfully so, because we had already had that conversation mm. and she had already cleaned mm. her soil out. And, and I felt like an idiot. Once she reminded me, I remembered, right? But I didn't remember. And so when we're pursuing a mission together, the sharpness of our mind is so critical because if you're doing anything of significance in the world, you're creating this specific body of knowledge in the feedback loops you're a part of so that you can show up and have the impact you're having in your business, especially if you lead a large team, right? As we work through, what does it look like for us to process everything out? And you need your mind at its sharpest capacity. And if you can have fun, some of the adrenaline from that, we're embedding these lessons deeper mm. and we're getting more from them. Mm. And uh, too often our, our memory is failing us because we didn't have a powerful enough experience. Suffice it to say, you could go on and on about the brain science behind all of this, but, but the key message here is it, it's not just an idea. There's science behind the chemical reaction within the brain that happens when there's play and celebration that, that opens you up for greater impact, greater, greater capacity. It, it's there. Bingo. Love it. Well, and this is why if you take an ancient look at things, and you know we love to do that at SightShift and look back, societies for thousands of years have organized around rhythms and parties because there was something about them that they knew was developing the social bonding, maximizing their capacity, getting past the doubts and the fears and everything we've covered today. And so if we could give you some practical encouragement, it would just be this. Adopt the celebration mindset, and you're going to do it in three ways specifically. You want to celebrate people for who they are. Mm. You want to celebrate the process, the effort, and you want to celebrate the outcomes. Effective organizations make that systemic. We've got to celebrate people because if we just celebrate outcomes, we confuse them. And most leaders have never worked for a leader who was sophisticated enough to say, I like you. I'm glad you're here. I want you on the team. We can't ever do that again. They separate personhood and performance. So we want to celebrate people. We want to celebrate process, the struggle, the growth, and we celebrate the outcomes. And each of you get to creatively do that. Figure out what works for you. Um, it might be 
a pizza party or burrito party, but please think bigger than that and think more systemically. Mark, any final words before we go? No, I think that sums it up well. Awesome. Always more for you at SiteShift, S-I-G-H-T, shift.com. We hope this summer your business finds more impact, income, and fun. Thanks for joining me on this episode. There's always more for you at SiteShift, S-I-G-H-T, shift.com, to be the leader you were meant to be.